Hello. This lesson is going to be kind of the basics once you received your parcel fabric. For those that are not uh, very GIS oriented in ArcMap, um, with the possibility that when you receive your parcel fabric, hopefully you will receive the MXD, which is the drawing file that maintains all your settings, basically. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the Alabama parcel fabric, and it really has nothing to do with the different types of lots and second division. Alabama has very little second division. As you can see on the screen, there's several townships here that include second division. But what this is going to be about is where to find your tools, um, how to pin them to the sidebars, top bars, bottom bars, wherever you want to pin them for use, and which toolbars that you will probably need for your applications. So right now, there's nothing we can really do other than start getting some of our tools. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and come up here to the top taskbar. You can right click on it and one of the first uh, toolbars we want will be editor. This toolbar I'm going to pin I want to pin right here. Okay now this has this is for your basic editing so we could I had already started editing I can stop editing you'll notice everything turns off so I start editing this is the editing toolbar that you would use in CAD and SDI these are the this is your selection tool or your edit tool these are the various things that you can do with this. This is your attribute uh, window that you can maintain open for just looking at the attributes of whatever you have selected. And these are several of the other features. Let's move on, get a few more of our toolbars, which the next one we probably want to get is tools. These tools I'm going to park beneath hopefully, beneath this editor toolbar. These are your tools, your zoom and zoom out, your pan, zoom extents, fix zoom in, fix zoom out. Uh, this is how you can select your features. Uh, this is just for selecting elements. This is to identify what you select. Uh, this is where you can measure, find, find route. Several of these you may not ever actually use. So, let's go ahead and get a couple more. The next one I probably want to get is standard. Now, these standard, this standard toolbar, I want to park up here, if it will allow me. There we go. And this has for a new document, uh, opening a document, save. If you want to print, um, you have cut and paste. Uh, undo your last command, redo the last command for adding data. This is your table of contents. This is your catalog. This is for search, your toolbox, and the other necessary toolbars for your basic editing. So the next ones we're going to get are going to be the spatial. This works also with the uh, CAD NSDI, more so than the parcel fabric. I want to park it up at the top here. I like to put all my basic standard stuff and my CAD NSDI up, up above where my uh, parcel fabric tools are going to go. Okay, so 
Next one I might want for editing for that would be my edit vertices, which you would use in the CAD NSDI. Now the next that I want to bring up is probably my parcel editor bar. So we come down here, click it on, and I'm going to park that down below here. Right here. There we go. And for those working with VLM or even outside of VLM that might be working in versions, you will want your version toolbar. This toolbar is what you will utilize for when you're in your parcel editing. This is what you will be using to change a version, to reconcile, and to post. That will probably be gone into more when we get into working with versions. <clears throat> So you can see all my parcel editor toolbars are lit up only because I have started editing in the standard toolbar. I can come here and I can stop editing and you can see all my toolbars go away. Okay, now that we primarily have the bulk of the toolbars that we're going to need, well, there is one more we'll get that you possibly will use if you're working in the actual CAD NSDI, and that's the Kogo toolbar. So we went ahead and got it, parked it up there. All right, now, the first thing I would probably want to do after I have my toolbars, because you have to have those before you can do anything else, is I want my table of contents. So here's my table of contents. Right now it's in the selectable. I'm going to make nothing selectable at this time and then this is the actual table of contents where I can change the feel and look of what I want to do so and what I'm speaking about there here with, with our control it is already set up properly <clears throat> so it came through in this parcel fabric correct the domains were correct we don't have any line points we do have points uh, I won't turn those on until we zoom in a little closer or the lines also because for this to refresh when you have all that turned on it takes a little while. Now the first thing I want to go through is a lot of times when you receive your first drawing or your MXD a lot of these may be solid where when I say solid is you can't see through the polygon to the underlying layers. So let, let's say uh, second divisions. If I turn those off, you can see the lines for second division go away. I turn them back on, they show up. Now some of this could be set with your zoom levels and your properties, which we will get into more later. Uh, we have our special survey second divisions, in Alabama, there are no quarter sections, so I'm not going to worry about turning it on. We do have first divisions, so if I turn on first divisions, now you can see where my second division kind of gets faded out and my actual township layer kind of gets faded out to where I don't see my townships as well. So what I like to try to do since townships is on top and we can see the township outline is green I start with my townships I come to it here's the current symbol it's probably hard to see but it does have a fill color uh, it also has diagonal lines in it that are probably really hard to see in this video so we could say we want no fill color or we could also say I want to edit this symbol because for this to show up with diagonal lines or some other than just a fill color means that there must be some type of symbol being applied of which we can see here there is a symbol the color and what it is so we can either just turn this off or we can come up here to color 
and say no color. And then that way we have nothing on the internal. Then we can say OK. And now for my outline width, the line that forms the outline. I generally like to have my townships at 3. And this is just a standard that I set up for myself. You can set up your own standard. I use Tuscan Red for my outline color. Then I say OK. Now you can see the new application for our township and we can see any other underlying layers such as first division. Second division is still kind of faded so the next layer I'm going or feature data set is going to be my first divisions. Section. Uh, right now has a fill color. It looks like it's yellow. We have protracted block, unsurveyed, protracted, unsurveyed, unprotracted. These in my standard, I will generally put no color on these. Um, unsurveyed, protracted, unsurveyed, unprotracted, I do. Protracted blocks, I do leave color. Um, but section is definitely one I want to change now. I don't believe there's any protractions in this Alabama database from uh, my previous review. So once again, we can either edit symbol which there is no lines so the other way we could do is just click here for fill color and we say no color now I set my first divisions at a line width of two and I like utilizing Quetzal green and I say OK now you can see we can see right through the first division and there's nothing underlying these first division. You can see the second division as it's set up now. Now in this second division, there are very few. These here, per the way they're set up, are unnumbered lots. And these here are government lots. So now that we have that set, I'm going to come up here and get my zoom in tool. And we're going to zoom in a little closer here so that we can see what these lots are. Actually these lots over here, their government lots, appear to be lotted sections or a section that is one lot. And when you go to second division, like if I turn first division off, here's my second division now. So it appear based having first division turned on that those lots for the government lots which are this green here which I'm gonna change I'm actually gonna go in and edit the symbol I'm going to change my fill I like to put a line fill symbol notice you come in with straight lines I like to put these at a 45 degree angle the color I like to make fire red and that takes care of my lines now I go back to my fill color and my fill color I want to change to electron gold I say OK and now it's changed so that they stand out different from my aliquot parts the numbered lots I generally won't use a if I do use a fill color I use something that stands out I'll usually do like fire red and my outline color I'll also use fire red Oops. and I generally make these at a line width of one as you see I'm for my townships a line width of three first divisions width of two quarter sections I use two also but we have none here second divisions I use a line width of one 
So now we have our unnumbered lots with this new color scheme or feel that we want. And actually I'm going to change my outline color in this instance to black and then say OK. So now I can tell just by the color these are unnumbered lots and here's the divisions. Up here I know these are government lots based on my new symbolization. I think I'll probably come in and do my outline color here the same as the electron gold and say OK for my government lots. Now for my aliquot part. I generally like to have a fill color on my aliquot part and I generally make these big sky blue. Once again this is just my preference. I do make this to one. My outline color I generally will do a little darker blue and it could be Cretan blue or lapis. We're going to use Cretan. And then I say OK. Now you see all my second division. I've changed everything so I can see everything at this zoom level and it all shows up. But you see there's no labeling at this time. That's because the labeling is set at certain zoom scales. We will go into that more in depth in a later uh, video on setting up your zoom scales and other things. I just want to get the basic setup in this getting started first video on where you can get things set up so you can see them. Now we can come back up here and we go to the previous extent. So we can see all of this now. There is not a whole lot of survey second division or anything in this Alabama parcel fabric. Once again this is just to demonstrate how you can set up the look and feel. If I want to go back to where I was, I can come right back there. Now, we're going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. And now we can see our labels, our aliquot parts, and these government lots that actually are all labeled zero. Probably because of the data of how they came in. This is where it could be edited if you needed to. Now if you wanted to select the second division, <coughs> you need to go list by selection and we need to select second divisions. And then we need to go start editing. We can get our selection tool. We can select the polygon. It's highlighted by cyan. That can be changed. We can review stuff like that later or you may find it on your own. Now I want to see what those attributes are. There's two ways we can do this. The simplest way when we're just looking at single polygons is to come up here and get your attribute window. So you open your attribute window and now it has all the information that is supplied within there. It's telling us it's a government lot. This is the Alabama, uh, the Meridian Township and Range, and section and lot. If we scroll over here a little bit, or if I make this a little larger, we can see all the identifiers there, just like in our CAD NSDI. We can also look what's contained under this parcel, such as the lines. As you hover over these lines or highlight the line, you can see it light up which line it is. These are segmented lines because they're along a township or range line. So as we go along we could see which lines are which, various segments, and what you may want to do. Okay, we're going to go ahead and clear this since we already know what we need to do there. Now you notice everything went away out of the attribute window. Now this pin up here, when it's like this, you can click it and it, and it pins it to the side. If you go over 
highlight on it, you'll notice the pen is basically pointed west or to your left. At this point in time, I can't do anything with it. If I get it to go vertical or pointing south, I can grab this and I can bring it out here onto my viewing screen. Or you see all these arrows light up. These are all the various places that I can pin this. So if I come down here to this, I like parking mine over here. I have the vertical pin. I pin it. Basically the same, same thing with your uh, table of contents. I can just click on it and it parks it. Now, along with the table of contents, I can open my attribute table. This is something you may want to use if you're doing multiple polygons or making edits to multiple polygons. So I open my attribute table. Now you see it has all these attributes in here. Well, that's I come down here, it says show all records. So it's showing all records entirely within this parcel fabric. If I show selected records, I click on that. I have nothing selected, nothing shows up. If I come over here, select this, now it shows up. Once again, I can pull this away and I can look at my attributes. They're basically the same attributes. There's various means of doing batch editing here that we'll get into later. This is just to show you how to get things that you probably want before you start editing in the parcel fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this. I'm going to go ahead and pin it back over where I like it. Like I say, you can pin these any place you want, up to the top, either side, or the bottom. Now, the other thing that you're probably going to be using fairly regularly in uh, the parcel fabric is Arc Catalog. So that's this button right here. I click on it. It opens Arc Catalog. It takes it over here because that's where I originally had it done in here. I went in, deleted everything so I could show how to find everything and repin it. You know, so when it comes to loading control, you're going to need to get to the various uh, databases that you need to load to, uh, that you need to highlight. So you right click for loading control. If you go to the videos for loading control, it'll demonstrate that. This is demonstrating how to get this set up so it's at your fingertips for use. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this. I know it's going to go this side since it's already kind of stuck there. Once again, I could pull this away. Or I can pin it back by double clicking on it. And that actually doesn't pin it. It just takes it back to its previous location. I click on it. The vertical pin, it comes up back over here and pins itself to the sidebar. I come off of it, it goes away. If I want to just highlight, open it up, see where I'm at. Same thing with attributes. Everything makes everything accessible, but you don't have multiple windows open until you need them. So basically, that's how you would probably want to set yours up. You make receive your parcel fabric with the toolbars already there. These are the basic toolbars I would suggest that you have at your availability. Being that you are the data steward, you will probably both be verifying your CAD and SDI after you publish back to it and may need to do some various things in the CAD and SDI using this editor process or some of these other tools, Kogo and so forth. All these apply to both CAD and SDI and the uh, parcel fabric. Um, of course, you're probably always going to use zoom in, zoom out. When you zoom in here, it's by window. These are set. This is your pan. This is for you where you get your hand and you can move things around and so forth. Um, you saw me using the, the zoom key before. Now if I come back up here and get my selection tool, I select that, you notice my clear selected features lights up. Okay, 
Um, I can set how I want to select if I want to do something different but I can still just do a rectangle on I whatever items that I cross it'll select and then I can clear them so basically this is just to give you a jump start to get things set up in a in a fashion that you can see all the data that you have set it up so that you have availability to the layers uh, of course in most of the parcel fabrics you're probably going to have subdivision of all the townships and sections uh, with the exception where you have protractions but those protractions will probably still show up in here anyways this pretty much shows you how to get the tools that you need at the moment and what you would probably want to have at your disposal now once we have all these set up I can come in here and say stop editing as I did not make any edits it's not going to ask me if I want to save the edits now if I change this back to my last view to here say that's where I want to leave out of this arc map drawing I want to be able to come back into this larger area if I just say I want to close arc map now and I tell it to save changes okay we saved our changes I did not realize that if I closed arc map it was going to close my recorder at the same time uh, but I did have a set so that it would only record arc map and now I have it set to full screen. And to demonstrate that if you tell it to save changes, we're going to reopen ArcMap. This is demonstrate to show you that if I come back into the Alabama Parcel Fabric and I say open, it brings me right back to where I wanted to save the changes. So this is just only to basically verify that this is where we're at. We haven't gone back into an edit session or anything, but I reopened the parcel fabric and it took me to where I left off. So if you're doing a day's editing and you want to get back to a specific area or you could leave it to where it was zoomed in to a specific area and tell it to save it, so that when you return the next day to continue your work, it comes right back to where you were and you save where you left off instead of telling it not to save those changes and wherever you started originally in your edit session basically is where it's going to go back to. Well, this will conclude this portion of getting started and it'll probably be a couple more uh, to go in a little more detail on some of these other commands and uses of some of the tools. But for now, that'll conclude this uh, lesson in getting started.